Hey, this is Montag, Master of Illusion, and uh, we're going to be doing our first ever album review. That's right. That's right. I want to thank Char Tupper from Breaking the Law PR and Nikki Law. Um, we're going to be reviewing the band Phobophilic and their album Enveloping Absurdity. All right, Dreadbull. Would you like to uh, begin with saying some things about the new Phobophilic? Sure. Uh, right off the top, I love this band. <laughs> this was a fantastic album. Uh, probably listened to it, maybe probably in its entirety, three, four times, uh, certain tracks a bunch of times, because, yeah, they were just worth rewinding and listening to over and over. <laughs> some great stuff. We can get into that if when we talk about some of our favorite tracks off of it. Um and then the title, I had to look it up. So I looked up several terms off of this album. Uh, phobophilic. I'm like, okay, is that a real, is that some kind of real phobia? So yeah, phobophilia is the the love of fear. Oh, nice. That's how it's defined in the urban oh, dictionary. Okay. So, uh, and yeah, there are certain other song titles that are, that are odd here that I had to look up, but there's oh, a, like the first a lot of Jungian uh, psychology going on in this album. Nice. So I don't know if you noticed that or not, but uh, we'll get into that more later, but yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I like uh, as far as, you know, I'm, I'm hitting miss when it comes to death metal. There are certain time types I really like, and you know, I'm not really into the relentless, relentless, nonstop heavy, you know, play as heavy and fast as you can all the time. I, that turns to kind of white noise in, in my brain eventually. But uh, this, Phobophilic, this, their, their style of death metal I love because there's some like doom mixed in. There's mm -hmm. some really interesting time signatures and transitions and it, it stays interesting. To me, that's a much more interesting thing to listen to than than just hard and fast as you can go the whole time. So um, yeah, this is my kind of death metal and I, <laughs> thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed this album uh yeah everything yeah. about it's top notch the guitar work the drumming you know the compositions themselves uh, everything about it is is uh is is top notch I, i'm really really impressed yeah I, I i agree with that i mean um i found it to be like this kind of sludgy melodic death metal with doom elements to it which which i again i really like mm -hmm. as well um i also kind of heard echoes of like carcass mm -hmm. in places that the way their riffs ran and they're kind Absolutely. of very melodic the guitar riffs they would have like these um very melodic notes being played over um sludgy kind of chugging riffs and also a couple of times where i heard like nile almost like nile like more the uh middle eastern egyptian Ooh. sounds that like oh okay not as not as definable as nile but like like echoes like oh okay and again it's that melodic kind of uh sound because i think nile is very melodic even though they're bludgeoning force some of their slower songs though have that kind of chugging melodic um mm -hmm. so i yeah i agree i i really like this band so i i am so glad that we were um asked to do this review because man uh, this is a great album uh chop is there anything that you'd like to add yeah yeah um you know what i've heard of it i i like the uh there's a lot of there's some actually some melodic moments with the guitar parts. There's a lot of ascending riffs. They're doing some different things, ascending and descending. Uh, it's like riffs within riffs, you know, as they're doing things. So I was really focused on the guitar work uh, throughout there. Um, only downfall I have is is the vocals are buried. So buried, I think buried in the mix for me. But uh, I really like the top notch musicianship, uh, drumming's incredible as well mm -hmm. and uh like i said there's almost not like just there's, blast beats i mean they're there sometimes but it's not there just some, that. almost like there's mm -hmm. some gas style stuff going here and there yeah so and uh, i really like the uh it's almost like they had it with the, the doomier stuff and some of this ethereal almost like a a cosmic kind of feel to it like i'm picturing as i'm listening to this album almost love crafty and type creatures you know and mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. so it just gave me that kind of vibe and everything but uh yeah, I mean, uh, fantastic musicianship across the board. And like I said, those guitar players, and the, there's actually some dual harmony stuff going on throughout as well mm -hmm. within those songs. So, yeah. It really sets it apart, I think, from some other death metal bands in that, in that way. The musicianship does. Well, let's talk about some of our favorite songs um, then. Uh, you know, you, Dreadbull, you had mentioned about looking up some of the titles. Did you look up the meaning of the first song? Yes, an enteodromia. Yes, I did actually, and this is uh, in, like in in terms of like nature. This is nature seeking balance. 
So this is the, if some kind of an extreme uh, develops, there's always an equal and opposite, you know, it's that equal and opposite thing. There's another extreme that will come, that will seek to bring a balance. And then that's equal another, there's another union. Yeah. And that's a Jungian thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the, it's the, his, his def definition of, I think I'm pronouncing that right. Right. An antiodromia. Oh, anatra an anatra dromia uh, anatra dromia tr am i did i spell it wrong here andromeda what are we talking yeah, about? <laughs> anyway it's the emergence of the unconscious opposite in the course of time so he thinks that you uh, if you build up an extreme one-sided tendency huh. that as you get older another equally opposite extreme will will develop to help balance and, and to seek that right. balance see you're so only halfway you, through uh, with my life but it's in the other extreme of me building up over the next 40 years triple yeah is that where that uh you your candle came from your i guess so right right so yeah i think this is actually maybe they even try to demonstrate this in the song because uh you know there's that slow sludgy sort of build up mm -hmm. even the outro there's kind of the slow plotting section at the end you know, and more aggressive, faster paced stuff in the middle. So I got a feeling yeah. they, they tried to sort I, of. I kind of got this sense of like the, the music felt like it was doing this kind of mm -hmm. two sides going up and down. Um, a lot of melodic riffs, uh, solos in this one and musical interludes between the singing, which I, I really liked because off the bat, first song, you have a lot of chance to show off musicianship. Yeah. And they do it right from the, right from the get go. Yeah. All right. And Totally agree. Uh, uh, do you want to? I was go just going to my tracks, or well, no, if you want, yeah, I was just going to mention uh, the next one. I was going to mention is you know that I really liked was Cathedrals of Blood. Um, mm. it, it it reminded me a lot of uh, again some Nile like moments, and I really like Nile. Not that I'm saying this band is like Nile. I mean, it's its own entity, but there are some of these styles and these kind of riffs. Uh, what make me like Nile as opposed to other death metal bands make mm. me like Phobophilic because it echoes some of that stylistic choices but i i liked cathedrals of blood too yeah mm -hmm. i totally agree that's my favorite track on the whole album i think mm -hmm. uh it's just like this is stank face material <laughs> on this album i was making the stank face listening nice. to this one and i listened to i re-listen to this track a lot uh it, it's just like those really driving drums and that relentless sort of guitar riff it, it Oh, it's so good it's really <laughs> yeah. a big sludgy ending you know that big mm -hmm. heavy sludge ending um yeah this uh, probably listened to this at least a dozen times and uh, you know dread, dread what you said before earlier at the beginning of the review is like there's there's it's it's not that constant bah, 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 mm -hmm. you know there's so much variety and, and throwing in the doomy riffs and some more melodies you don't you don't hear sometimes a lot or to this year a lot of times i don't hear a lot of melody and and death metal is, is the guitar work but with this band it really comes through and uh especially the the dual leads harmonies and uh, those ascending riffs are really cool within the riff. So, yeah. right. I mean, it almost borders on like progressive, progressive death metal to me. There's mm -hmm. some really weird uh, yeah. time signatures and stuff. And so, and I it's not I'm, quite I tech death. It's not technical death, but yeah. it, there is some progressive elements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, enough to really keep it interesting. I think and ten, kind of show off their obvious their musicianship is excellent. Mm -hmm. So a little chance to show some of that off and just their their compositions, their writing. Is, is it's all top notch, yeah. man. Nice, really impressive. All right. Well, what uh, what other track would uh, would you like to talk about there, Dread? Uh, I've got it's kind of two tracks, but uh, mm -hmm. individuation, mm -hmm. and then that leads into the illusion of self. Yes. Um, and that was another one. So we'll start with mm -hmm. Carl Jung. Uh, individuation is the process where you become an individual you learn those things about you that are separate and individual indivisible from the whole you know this and nice. so uh in which it's, it's almost like a maslow another psychi psychologist would have said this is when you're self-actualizing or yeah and that's you're exactly what self you know self-actualization or that theory of needs yeah yeah, yeah self-realization self-actualization yeah mm -hmm. And that's interesting because the next track is the illusion of self. Mm -hmm. So it kind of nice. flips it right on its okay. head instantly. So there's a lot of cool psychology Seeking going on. I would, yeah. I would love to yeah. talk to the guys from the band. I'd love to well, hear more about this. So I, I, I was going to ask them if they'd come on the show. Yes. So Phobophilic, uh, mm -hmm. if you're hearing this and, and, and Char and, and Nikki, um, we'd love to talk with you. Come mm -hmm. on, talk us, 
talk us through Jungian psychology. We'd love to yeah. have you on. <laughs> I'd love to hear more about the yes. psychology of this. Yeah. Yeah, their creative process, everything. Yeah. Great. Yeah, I love the illusion of, of individuation. I, I That's where mm-hmm. I thought I heard this like, touch of Middle Eastern musicality. Yeah. I thought it was quiet introspective it was a nice interlude a surprising interlude it was only short yes. like two and a, two and a half minutes yeah um but i thought oh this is really unexpected in this death metal album you're not expecting this kind of quiet mm-hmm. very thoughtful kind of piece that i thought oh but it wasn't boring it wasn't repetitious it was like it was intriguing it was there was mm-hmm. layers of music and i oh okay this is really good and yeah i, I sorry Oh, I was just going to say, and I, I love how it gets into the illusion of self because that one is driving, driving yeah, yeah. and melodic. And this one had, it, like, I was hearing, like, reminding me of, like, why I like the band Death and more Carcass. It was a technical driving, you know, heavy, heavy stuff. Well, yeah. you know, like we thought before, it's not many times that we're really big fans of musical interludes into other songs, you know, yeah. but this fit really, really well. You know, went from that to that last track is just, uh, yeah. It's, 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 it's amazing really good stuff mm-hmm. yeah we've talked about instrumentals and you know they're often in hit very hit or miss it didn't but work so I well think, with yeah. our last uh, slugfest <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> sometimes they either come across as like a, a whole bunch of leftovers that they tried mm-hmm. to mash into a song right or, or, or in, like, inside jokes like look at us how funny we are like a tool and things yeah somebody falling Whatever. asleep on an organ and an <laughs> 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 well, we have 38 seconds let's put it in there <laughs> yeah, uh, but, but yeah, i think the good instrumentals work. either either evoke some kind of real cool like a uh, uh, real cool vibe or a really evoke some kind of emotion you know and uh, i think this one really does a great job of that and, you know it's like some of the really good like cool metallica i think they were really good at, at writing instrumentals because mm-hmm. there was an emotion or a, a, a mood or something that they were able to create along with it so what's the big one on uh, was it orion on master puppets, on master has, puppets has yeah, yeah. especially when it slows when it slows down it, that that's got yeah. a nice groove yeah. To it. yeah yes it does so yeah, yeah great stuff and mm-hmm. the uh illusion of self like i said this has got to be a, a playoff of the uh mm-hmm. individuation so got to talk to these guys about this I'd be yeah very... i also really like enveloping absurdity the last track on the album um it's a long track it's like eight minutes uh, a little over eight minutes it's it's complex it's rich it's melodic i think it's a fantastic way to finish this album because mm-hmm. um, it kind of showcases everything that you've by the time you get to the end you see what Good this point. band can do yeah and then now it's like hey we're going to put all these cool things into one long song but it doesn't feel like an eight minute song mm-hmm. that's the thing it's it's just like wow okay this is a this is a fantastic band and a, a great album for them Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah sometimes you get you dive into something new you have no idea what you're going to expect you know maybe the first couple minutes you you form an opinion but uh yeah this band was not like that at all you know mm-hmm. like you have an opinion immediately but then all of a sudden it changes and then changes again like wow so this album kept my interest and just kept pulling me through the entire album there's mm-hmm. not a boring moment yeah this whole album before <laughs> we're getting this album i'd heard like one track i'd looked them up on youtube and i I've watched some of their like live show i thought oh okay so they've got a death metal band here and like you know and then but hearing their album uh, yeah, I agree with you there, Dredd. It's like it, there was so much more going on mm-hmm. here, um, and it and it deserves a, a couple of listenings. You What's know, amazing to, is they they throw all that stuff in in thirty six minutes. I mean, it's just you know yeah. it's a short album, and yeah. it's just it's unbelievable because you get a, you know a lot of other bands you get albums maybe that length or whatever, and you don't hear that much, and you're just like, oh okay. So, but this there's so much to listen to, and there's so much texture, and there's so much diversity within the plane and the drums, whether it be the drums or the guitar playing and stuff that, yeah, creates quite an enjoyable experience for that short of time. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, my love for dream theater, this to me is, is that same experience that I get listening Mm -hmm. to dream theater, like going through this album, it just, it always stayed interesting. And, uh, you know, I didn't zone out because I hit a, they had a repetitive beat forever. You know, this was always something to listen to and something to perk your ears up and, you know, skip back and hear it again. Like, great, yeah, you can great only, stuff. I think on re-listens, you can always you're gonna pick out something else. Mm-hmm. If you listen, you know. Yeah, so I'm definitely already. I'm big, big time fan of this band already. So I'm looking forward to to more from them. Yeah, same here, same here. 
All right. Well, hey, there's our first album review, Phobophilic, Enveloping Absurdity. Uh, again, I want to thank Char Tupper from Breaking the Law PR for sending us a copy of the album. Uh, I want to thank Nikki Law for letting us do the review. And I want to thank the guys from Phobophilic uh, for making a great album. And I tell you what, guys, seriously, we want to interview. Come on the show. We want to have a good yes. time with you. We want to talk to you about your album and your lyrics. Um, so, Nikki, if you're hearing this, Char, let's make this happen. <laughs> so, anyway, hey, this has been Montag, Master of Illusion. And Chop Top. And Dread Bull. And you've been listening to our album review. <laughs> <laughs> that would have sounded much better had we rehearsed it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thanks. Sure, man. Cool. No problem at all. So, yeah, we're excited to have you on. Um, yeah, this is, we're going to have a lot of fun. We got some cool games, and, you know, we're just a oh, bunch shit. of uh, some knuckleheads. You know, we we just longtime friends. Uh, one of us is not with us today. He had some, uh, like, late last-minute family thing pop up where he, uh, he had to leave. But we've all no known problem. each other for, like, 30, 40 years. Um, so we were just a bunch of knuckleheads who kind of stumbled into to doing this show for fun and then kind of meeting people and getting – you know, guests like yourself on board. It's just like ice cream on the cake, you know? Okay. Well, it's been on the guys and um, Dan Lavon from me. From, you're listening and watching heavy fucking metal fucking horror. That's not the PC version. I am Montag. Master of Illusion. What goes up must come down, but not always. Hey, this is Chop Top, and this is going to be one hell of a tea party. <laughs> Stay happy. <laughs> and you are watching and listening to Heavy Metal Horror. Whoa, kitties. Chop Top's right. We've got a hell of a show tonight. We've got Crucifix. From Satanic Tea Company. Crucifix, welcome to Heavy Metal Horror, man. Thank you so much for having me. Stoked to be here. Yeah, we're we going to have a good time tonight. Um, you know, I appreciate that you put on the corpse paint. I, I love that. Uh, it's great. That's great. Um, it's, uh, I love that branding. And we, we got so much excitement to talk about. But first, we'd like oh, yeah. to just kind of get some background questions. We always like to kind of get to know our guests a little bit. Um, so, when did you first get into music? Uh, super early on. Like, I, my sister was into, like, radio rock, I guess. So, like, my first intro to, like, rock music was, like, Creed, I guess, from, like, the radio. So, like, <laughs> arms wide open, uh, stuff like that. I was raised um, in a very strict Christian uh, household. Um, so, there was, like, strictly only Christian music allowed. Mm -hmm. um, in our house so like i'd go to the christian bookstore at like 10 or 11 and but then they would sneak in like heavy metal christian albums so like azalea dying and demon hunter and stuff like okay. that i was able to like build my pathway into extreme metal yeah <laughs> through like christian metal yeah disciple and blood good and resurrection band and those kinds of things yeah totally yeah yeah um you and i have a lot in common I was raised in the same kind of way, uh, Pentecostal, oh, yeah. but you know, fundamentalist background, and and didn't know that I was listening to the devil's music until I was a teenager when I was told that I was going to hell for having a Kiss albums, you know. Yeah, so uh, totally. <laughs> I, I get, I get it, man. I totally get it. Um, yeah, after the show, we'll, maybe we'll talk just for a few minutes about that. I'd love to uh, meet people who kind of had those same kind of re religious trauma, you know, in their lives. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Um, yeah. So um, what? What is it about the extreme metal as a genre that attracts you? Um, yeah, I guess like early on, it was just like probably from, yeah, some of that Christian trauma, just like I'm a pretty laid back, uh, mellow type B sort of person. But um, having like a lot of like yeah, issues growing up, I think I related to being able to get that kind of focused aggression out in like uh safe <laughs> kind of way to like just yeah. listening to it um and then yeah starting to play in bands when i was like very early on like 12 13 years old um in like metal bands christian metal bands to start um 
and yeah, as soon as I started playing and like um, being able to like connect with that music, it was just uh, like a drug. I was pretty hooked. And here, like yeah, twenty some odd years later, I'm still uh, very much hooked on it. Yeah, yeah. I think some of that that aggression and frustration that comes out of the cognitive dissonance of that trauma you know evolves and you want you want someone to be able to express that frustration you know and like you know yeah so i i uh i kind of get that so uh you, you had mentioned growing up listening to these you know christian extreme metals so when you think of your musical heroes now um who are some of these uh, of your musical heroes oh uh, yeah so like early on not too much from the original stuff like i was in originally one of the first extreme metal bands was that as a late dying um, but yeah, the vocalist got ended up going to jail for trying to get a hit out on his wife. So that kind of like <laughs> smashed that a little bit. Um, but now, yeah, like now it's like people like, uh, Cannibal Corpse is probably just like a big one for me right now. They've just been doing it for so long and they've stayed yeah. true, um, to what they're doing and it's just like still putting out awesome album after awesome album. And then like, even like newer ones right now, I think are just, really cool is like a band like ghosts um just being putting that imagery and like being able to put um such like uh interesting and satanic like imagery and lyrics like on like a mainstream sort of platform like they're playing stadiums and stuff now so i just think that's like really yeah. interesting what they're doing um and trying to like also like trying to do like a similar thing but with death metal yeah i i do love the imagery I, I want to like their music more, but I, I could I admit I've only heard maybe half a dozen songs and I want to give them more of a chance, but I do love the imagery of it and the pageantry. You know, there yeah. is something it's the same reason why I like, you know, King Diamond and things like that. There's just something about totally, yeah. the whole package. And and I love like the black metal sound. I mean, I love that's just it just calls to me. And Chop and I have been friends. We saw King Diamond. We uh we we've seen him a couple of times and and um so no I I totally get that. Um, so have you had a, had a chance to meet any of your musical heroes, uh, the people you really li admire? And, and if so, what, what was that experience like for you? Uh, not really. I guess like I've met like a couple of people in bands. I've like just from working on some tours, but yeah, not, not any like musical heroes. I don't think so. I haven't really had the opportunity to meet too many of, but yeah, I feel like a lot of the don't meet your heroes is like, sometimes it's kind of like nice to keep the separation there a little bit to like keep them in like that high regard just in case like something might happen i guess but yeah not really uh have you ever have you ever met any of yours yeah and most of the oh, time yeah. it's been really great interactions um but you're right there's a there has been one time in particular uh <laughs> uh i used to love kiss growing up and i met uh, did a backstage meet and greet with Kiss and Gene Simmons was like a total dick, you know? Yeah. And, and I thought, man, I paid a thousand bucks for this. You're an asshole, you know? Yeah. 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 And it's like, it never, it, from that point on, it's like, I've never liked him. I, I've never felt the same way about the band. Cause that's the band that made me want to be a musician at 10 years old. I was doing Gene Simmons paint and like spitting blood and, imagine yeah. that's, just, this is what I want to do with my life, you know? And, and kind of modeled, you know, even in the college, like this is why I want to be in a in a band. You know, kind of the thing like that. But after that, it's like, nah, kind of snap. Nope, it's done. You know, totally. Yeah, I should correct myself. I haven't met any of them in person, but like working with a kind of a couple through like collabs. Um, one that stands out in particular is Danny Filth from Cradle of Filth. Mm -hmm. Like he's, um, especially like the imagery and all that stuff, like a major influence. So like, didn't get to meet him in person, but like we correspond through email to like work out um, different collaborations and key stuff. Oh, and that's cool. A couple of years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's still pretty amazing to be able to, to work with people at that level, you know? Oh, totally. Nice. So if who's your favorite metal vocalist? Metal vocalist. Um, uh, yeah, probably my favorite vocalist was Trevor from the black Dahlia murder who recently passed mm. away. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, Growing up, like his vocal style, um, just like such a, a massive range and just like flawless execution on every Black Dolly Murder record, um, just he just blew me away. And like seeing them live a few times, like perfect live. So um, he especially stands out for sure. Nice, 
Nice. Um, I want to talk a little bit about your creativity and process. Um, so, you know, you you have more of the the tea company side than the music, but you're obviously you know done music as well. So, what is your creative process um, when working on music? Um, yes, yeah, so like right now, um, we have yeah, like I have a certain like vision for like how I want it to sound. Like we're trying to like be more classic death metal um suffocation cryptopsy cannibal corpse like styled um so working with a producer um who's been a longtime friend and our old bands have toured together uh before so it's nice to work with someone familiar um so just, yeah just trying to like figure out the sound um and just like just being in the studio together um rounding that out um, as far as like the imagery and like the music videos and the lyrics i guess um it draws like everyone's like, oh, are all the songs about tea, <laughs> which is like <laughs> fair, fair, fair question. Uh, but they're not about tea. Um, it's like been about just like, yeah, some of the past like religious trauma growing mm -hmm. up. Um, some like recently, like a couple of songs, like I recently stopped smoking weed as much. Um, so like I've been having these crazy nightmares like every single day, like. I don't sleep very well <laughs> now that I I don't smoke as much weed. So like some of the songs are about this like re reoccurring uh, actual nightmares. Um, and just, I guess, like more end of the world than like um, hellscape type mm -hmm. stuff without giving like too much stuff away, I guess. Sure. Um, and then yeah, the music videos, I, I think it's just, it's kind of been, we've only have one out right now, but we have another one coming out in a couple of weeks here. Um, and then when we release an EP, we'll have, uh, video for every song but just like kind of creating just like a funny s like juxtaposition of like the character i portray as crucifix and like kind of like normal or just odd ways where you wouldn't normally see uh a character like myself i guess in yeah like like, like your day at the so, office kind of thing right <laughs> you know so, so, yeah that's actually <laughs> yeah. yeah really good my question has to be those those monstrous wristbands who the fuck ever designed those those are outrageous man. oh yeah it was pretty much just trying to find like the most uh before we got them it was kind of i didn't really think about how heavy they are for like long-term wear so that's kind of <laughs> been like kind of a backfire on me now like i got like giant calluses on my wrist from those things but yeah <laughs> oh, um it's like yeah just like a hundred nine inch nails on each one so it's like <laughs> <laughs> kind of a pain in the ass and i've definitely scratched oh, myself yeah. quite a bit but yeah um <laughs> those are fun <laughs> you have to start working in some like maybe bringing over plastic you know just just for those long-term wear and you know and i like the no. i like the gimp hood too yes you know from Pulp yeah. Fiction. That's yeah. Pretty cool. <laughs> bring in the gimp that's you know? right yeah that's <laughs> one thing i love about you know bands that you mentioned cannibal corpse chop and i saw them too it's like there's there's along with this extreme horror and metal bands, there's usually a, a, the tongue in cheek kind of thing. There's like, there's a sense of humor about it. Like, look guys, we know we're talking about getting fucked with a knife. We get that. And so there's a little bit of, you know, self-awareness and, and kind of the comical appeal, which I've also noticed in some of your other videos, like when you're making the grilled cheese or the nachos, you know, and like, those are, I, I, I like that about the, the genre as a whole. Like, okay, we're, we're having fun with it. You know, it's like yeah. dress up. It's like Halloween, you know, all those kind of fun things. Like why do we go to a horror film? Because we're going to laugh, you know, we're going to, we're going to watch someone get killed. We're going to laugh like, oh, that's fucking great. You know, do you, does that, is there part of that joy? I mean, in, in making this music too, there's gotta be some of that being able to perform it. Like, I don't know how you could put that stuff on and not just have some fun with it, you know? No, totally. I think that's like kind of the whole point. Like even wearing corpse paint and playing death metal, it's like kind of uh, definitely looked down upon, I guess, if you're like a true black metal person that is like very elitist and stuff, like they don't like you mixing and matching, that sort of thing. And people comment on that all the time. I think that's like the the fun is like almost the whole point of doing it, I think. Um and if you're if you're like one of those like super serious people who are gonna just take it too serious, like it's not for you. I think like um, it's like yeah, we're definitely it's all about like if you can't see that it's trying to be funny, then I'm not sure if you're <laughs> the right person for right. The, to consume our content. No, I I get it. I totally get it. And that's for the people who do get it. I mean, you could like yeah, okay, you appreciate that humor. You know, because a, a lot of horror, there's horror has comedy in it. There, There's a gallows humor that you just kind of have to go with. And, 
and it's a it's a particular kind of enjoyment where you you know you know you're watching someone get killed and you're going to be okay with it you know yeah. um so no no i i like that so i think it's funny those gatekeepers are out there you know in the metal community like you know oh you can't like this or that or you you know there's like some kind of rules that you have to follow i thought well where's the f the fucking fun and rules i mean this is the whole point is like rebellion and just like shattering all these things and you're putting on a good show i mean that's just part of the you know branding like we're going to have this extreme experience this is what you want to see you know yeah totally it's bringing like yeah just trying to like bring something different and interesting to the table where people will be like maybe we'll remember it and uh a little more and it'll stick out in people's mind as opposed to like another person just putting out like black and white mystical looking artwork that looks the same as like every single other person putting yeah. out metal uh, artwork, which is like nothing wrong. Like I love a lot of that stuff, but at the same, like just for our project, um, that's not what we're trying to do. Yeah. We want to like have fun with it. It, it is still extreme metal. Um, and hopefully like people will like be able to relate to that aspect of it. But like, yeah, there's definitely lots of like funniness <laughs> added in. Yeah. I always like, um, you know, trying to read band names and try to figure out what it is because it's certain in such a stylized font with you know and i'm like i i have no idea what this is so i mean that's gotta be that's part of the fun i think it starts with right there like we've got all kinds of stuff and it says you know you know splatter brain or whatever the band is i'm like oh, okay i can't i'm trying to read that i mean that's just part of the genre i think of, is making the the band name like look cool like you gotta decipher it you know um, totally uh, yeah even um some of these like uh oh sorry even like some oh. of like the metal posters like with a lot of these new age bands are just like absolutely unreadable so you have like the full set of unreadable logos and then underneath in brackets it's like the name <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, obviously yeah, yeah. that's funny in itself <laughs> Yes, exactly. It's like, okay, I get it. I get it. I mean, we don't need to be as, um, I guess, simple as like ACDC. We, we we can see those four letters. Thank you. But, yeah, but uh, at, the same time, at the same time, I get it. You don't want to solve a fucking hieroglyph. You want to read the fucking band name, right? So. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Just so. have it in parentheses, you know, on every <laughs> album cover underneath the shitty fucking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right and with with the with the death metal growl of vocalization it's you know it's hard to hear or understand what the lyrics are so in a way you know we could, you could just sit at the beard like going rrr, 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 and you know it's not going to make uh there's just something to that and i although, i can't possess that growl but right. although there is a lot of metal bands you know i'm a big fan uh, specifically melodic death metal and some classic death metal but it, you know you can actually hear like these current singers and stuff, a lot of the lyrics that come out. Uh, one that comes to mind, Amon Amarth. You can hear Johan pretty, you know, pretty clearly on that. And uh, and I, I'm a big fan of Arch Enemy too. So I like Elisa, and I liked uh, previous singer as well. So, but that's what I you know enjoy about that part. But then again, I can go. I got some Cannibal Corpse CDs. Go right to Corpse Grinder, man. Fucking hit it up, and it's just like, yeah, when you're in the mood for that. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, let's talk a little bit about, about your tea company. Um, and it's, I, I love that there's this combination of two elements, you know, you've got, we've got the black metal and the black tea, you know, which is, which is fantastic. So when did your love for tea um, begin? Um, it was probably like my big love for tea probably happened after I started the company. Um like at the beginning, I didn't like I drank tea. I also drank way more coffee at the time um, in 2017. Um, I just wanted to start a business online overall. Um, we sold T-shirts as well as tea at the beginning. Um, the reason we started selling tea is um, I was visiting. My dad lives in Portugal. Um, I was there seeing him for the first time in like a few years. Um, he his friend, I guess, owned a tea field that they were trying to like get me to like, Oh, you can maybe sell this tea that we grow in this tea field. Then I got back to Canada and I was pretty overwhelmed with like importing and stuff and what the logistics were to selling like a very, very small portion of tea. Cause I was just starting out. Um, so I ended up just like keeping that idea with tea, using a different supplier um, and just like 
said, fuck it. I'll just go try this out, I guess. <laughs> um, I don't really see any metal themed tea anywhere. So mm-hmm. I just did like three flavors that I liked myself. Um, so I'm pretty selfish that way. And then <laughs> just uh, people weren't buying the t-shirts we were selling. They were only really buying the tea. Um, and because uh, with like the black metal, I guess, like satanic imagery, people started calling us that satanic tea coat. Even though, like, we started out as Pitch Black North, which I guess is like the parent company of the Satanic Tea Co. Um, so yeah, we just kind of leaned into the tea, um, just started referring ourselves to only Satanic Tea Co. Um, and just like through that process of like the tea company side growing, um, it's just yeah, like it's very customizable, like. There are tea not like there are tea snobs and like a card. I didn't start selling coffee first because I was like afraid of the coffee snobs <laughs> from this <laughs> new person. But there's just as many tea snobs in the world. So it really, really okay, yeah, they're a violent bunch. Um, yeah, totally. Yeah, um, yeah. I think people satanic Starbucks uh, like, company, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just like just like through the experience of like growing the company and like just growing my knowledge of tea through that. Um, I think that's where I really like started just enjoying the ritualistic like kind of process of making your tea. Everyone's got a different preference. It's just like, um, yeah, just through starting the company is how I started liking tea and like um, really falling in love with uh, this industry, I guess. Cool. Well, I saw that you mentioned that your tea is ethically sourced. Um, can you can you talk a little bit about what that means and, and how it's sourced? Um, yeah. So like, before I would just get ingredients from like wherever I could, um, just starting out like very fresh um, from like other tea companies that would kind of help me with that. But now we work um, solely with uh, my friend's tea company here in Calgary. Um, she works very hard um, directly with farms like all over the world um, that grow their stuff independently stuff in Canada and like we get some of our spices from like women communes in Afghanistan and all over the world um, and trying to get it like sourcing it as locally as possible so it's all fair traded and like the workers um, there's like different programs people have to like abide by certain um, standards to be able to apply for these ethical um, practices to be like certified in this sort of way Um, so like only working with people who have those um, standards in place um, and getting the ingredients from that so in the end it does create a more expensive product but you can also feel better that like the workers are paid properly the tea is all high quality ingredients uh, and you don't have to like wonder like how like i guess people a lot of people don't think about like the process of like the food to your table or farm to table or whatever Mm -hmm. um your preferences so like how did that tea get from wherever it was grown how did those spices get from wherever it was grown like where was it grown and how are the workers treated to like the cup of tea you're drinking now so um as i was learning more about the tea company and getting help from the person i'm working with now that helps out with the ethically sourced stuff it's like yeah there's like a a lot of people get mistreated and a lot of ingredients are like not good (laughs) and a lot of like especially like the big chain grocery store tea bag so i didn't want to just slap together any sort of thing so it's um yeah you could feel better about i guess <laughs> drinking um ethically sourced products if it's like up to standard yeah no i, I love that because you do well by doing good you know um and and we have some local farmer like farm markets around here and we have this program called fresh fork which is um local all the local farmers there's a co-op and then they bring their produce and then you just sign up for the program. And then like every week during the summer and, and fall, as the produce comes in, you just get a bag of mixed produce, sometimes locally sourced dairy and meat. Um, and, it, and and then you know that all the produce and all the monies go to directly to farmers in the community, you know? And so and I, I kind of get that. I, I, I appreciate that. That's, that's a good thing. And then you do feel good. Like, yeah, it, this is worth it because paying a living wage. I mean, these people are living in, and most of them are, are in horrible conditions. So why not give them a chance to do well for themselves? You know, totally. Now, uh, you had mentioned that you started off with three blends that you like, but do you create all these blends yourself, or do you have like a team of people who work on different blends? 
Um, so yeah, it's like a, I guess it's a combination of things. Like, um, we work with a lot of bands through collabs. Like, I take a lot of um, suggestions from them if what they want for their like their band's tea or the artist tea. So like, we'll they'll give me suggestions of what they like, and I'll like give them guidance on like what's possible um, based on what their recommendations are. I do a lot of the blends myself. And then again, we work with um, the person who is sourcing the ingredients um, through sort of Jessa tea here in Calgary. Um, and sometimes if we really want to do a good blend, like if we're both ordering the same ingredients, we can cut the cost down quite a bit by ordering such a large bulk. So yeah, it's, I guess it's a combination of myself, um, the bands we work with, and even like our, we have a tea club, a Patreon tea club where we, um, I get in input from the tea club members on what they want uh, to see in the shop. Nice. Chop will have to get a heavy metal horror tea blend. I mean, you know, we yeah. have to make this happen. Um, right. So how does one make the perfect cup of tea? Um, yeah, I think it just, yeah, it first starts as like with good ingredients, um, which we do. Um, and then it's just like, it's a lot of preference. Like everyone's different. Um, and I don't think there's like any wrong answers for like, if you want milk in your tea, if you want honey or sugar, like do whatever the fuck you want, as long as you're happy at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So it's a lot of per personal preference, I guess. It really depends on who you're asking. Like for me, I like a uh, strong cup of black tea with a splash of oat milk. That's like my favorite thing. Um, but yeah, it starts with just good ingredients um, and not, oversteeping it which i'm really bad at forgetting okay tea tea in the bag and then i come back an hour later and it's bitter as hell <laughs> right yeah. right all right so what what is your favorite blend of all the teas that you uh, make which one's your favorite i'm like classically a basic bitch when it comes to tea like i like vanilla earl gray i'm very i'm like vanilla earl gray i love i like all the teas you make but like i'll have a cup of vanilla earl gray like without fail every day um Every day. Yeah. Vanilla Earl Grey is big. I'm big on vanilla. Okay. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> and this is, this is, might be an important one. Maybe, you know, uh, <laughs> does Satan have a favorite blend? And if so, what is it? Uh, if Satan had a favorite blend, it would probably be, it would probably be Satan's, our Satan slumber blend. <laughs> um, but a hard day yeah. of possessing people and causing shit in the world. You just want to relax, right? No, totally. And my mom <laughs> swears by it. <laughs> who is also like a very strong catholic woman nice okay that's good that's good um yeah. <laughs> uh, i'd like i'd like to talk a little bit about marketing a little bit i know this is typically not what we talk about uh because but because of the company i, I tried to skew questions that were directly about this because um, you know you're a content creator and, and marketer and and i and i so i appreciate I appreciate having you know being able to ask these kinds of questions. Um, so your your recipe videos, tea videos are great fun, you know, and I, I love that you give directions with like the you know, the death metal, you know, growl. And um, so, what kind of reactions do you get from these videos? I guess like yeah, it's like a full spectrum of people love it. People think it's cringy as fuck. Um, some people there's like especially on like the TikTok platform, I guess there's like tons of Christians who will just put Bible verses and like all sorts of like hate <laughs> on that or like say I'm going to hell um, and stuff like that. But I think overall, like overall, it's pretty positive. Um, people are just like, I think it's like people can see it's fun and they just like, they people like uh, consuming that kind of content easily digestible. Um, and at the end of the day, you get like a, fun or just like outrageous drink or food item at the end right right so when you're thinking about content creation like what what is what is your main struggle as a, a content creator um i guess this like the constant changing of algorithmic things within different platforms like uh i feel like some days or some like months you'll do great. And then all of a sudden there'll, there'll be like an update or something. And you have to like kind of change how you're up a little bit, how you're doing it. And um, yeah, the platform, all the platforms are just, they're always growing, especially TikTok being like a newer platform. Like I think they've changed like three times in the past year. So it's like trying to like just understand and like trying to keep up um, 
what works and what doesn't because doing the same thing doesn't always work but at the same time switching it up can possibly like alienate your your base Mm -hmm. um, of consumers and viewers so it's yeah just trying to survive and keep growing while also like not alienating anyone (laughs) but also like keeping your image and your message true to what your brand is trying to be yeah yeah and if the people who get it will will stay with with you and it's that's hard for any industry i think to try to be who you're who you are but also keep up with changes and taste and things like that and also just experimenting with things like you know like we've done this same way for five years let's mix it up but you do you run that risk of alienating a core audience or something like that you know so it's that's tough um i've seen you make a couple things you know your videos when you're cooking so what is your favorite comfort food to cook uh comfort yeah like probably like when i'm just home alone like i don't know i love stir fries like my favorite food is probably fried rice <laughs> like I, I love i love fried rice anywhere like my favorite thing is going to like any type of restaurant vietnamese thai chinese like i love trying every restaurant's fried rice like it could be like the most basic or the most extravagant fried rice i want to try it (laughs) and even if it's like not that good or very basic i'll probably still like it yeah even at home like i i make a fuckload of fried rice (laughs) so do you use like the basic fried rice you put like meat in there like eggs green onions what else do you put in your fried rice uh yeah so sambal ginger uh green onions depending on the different meats i usually like just um chicken thighs green onions garlic uh if i'm feeling good onion too um extra egg like very eggy Mm -hmm. um and then yeah depending on mixed veg like broccoli carrots peas um sesame oil soy sauce and sriracha love a good fried rice (laughs) yeah that sounds good i'm getting hungry now um okay um Let's talk a little bit about fame and celebrity. Um, so who's your bucket list celebrity to meet? doesn't have to be in the music genre, but if you got, do you have a bucket list celebrity? Like, man, I really want to hang out with this person. Yeah. Like um, a couple of people would definitely be like King Diamond would be one. Um, Tobias Forge, the singer of Ghost, I think would be great. Um, anyone from Ramstein, I think would just be hilarious. Um, yeah it just they yeah, have like, such yeah, like, a great presence on stage i mean they're just fucking it's just everything it's amazing. just being hit with a wall you know totally yeah, yeah. just like I, I like people um with yeah just big personalities um that can just like they they've found something that they can really connect with like massive scale audiences so yeah like king diamond tobias forge um the singer of Ramstein, who I can't remember his name right now. Uh, those, someone asked me that recently. To, yeah, just like try to figure out how we could do a pyrotechnic tea with Ramstein one day somehow. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, uh, I, it had to yeah. be bring in some kind of spice, you know, something spicy, yeah. peppers and things like that to kind of amp it up. I would think you'd want that. Maybe a little bit of cinnamon and and uh, those flavors. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah, we're King Diamond supposed to come on the show sometime when the new album comes out and he starts doing press. We're on his list, so um, really, that's I, awesome. I'm really fucking excited to meet the King. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> it's yeah. Just like, yeah, and I absolutely love the, the the costuming that he's wearing for the Merciful Fate tour. I don't know if you have if you've seen yeah. the pictures, like with the crown and stuff. It's like, oh my god, it's just beautiful. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, I've seen yes. a few pictures. Yeah, I was like, oh, that's fucking awesome, man. Yeah. Um, Okay, uh, let's talk about some uh, hypothetical situations here. Um, I want you to create a super group, okay? Which three or four musicians, past or present, would you want to play with? With my own band or just yeah. like a new band? Well, if you were going to create a super group and you, you, you were going to be in it, we're in the band. Who, three other four people, who would you want to be in your band to play with? Oh, that's a great question. Um a bass player from Cannibal Corpse. Uh, um, yeah. I can't remember his name <laughs> right now. Alex, Alex um, Webster. Yeah. Alex Webster, yeah. Um, and there's so many. It's hard to pick. There's so many good. Um, 
Yeah, that's a that's a tough that's a tough question. Um, guitar player. Um, yeah, you caught me on the spot. <laughs> Sorry, man. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, super group. Um, guitar player who is now the new singer for the Black Dahlia Murder. I think his name's Ryan. Um, drummer. Damn. There's too many good drummers. This is a tough question. We know. Yeah, it is. It is tough. It is, yeah, it's a tough question. Um, I would. Yeah, I. Pre, I. If I could probably choose. I would just choose everyone from Cannibal Corpse. <laughs> okay. Uh, to be. They're already a super group band. Um, yeah. No, that's cool. That's tough. Yeah, they're yeah, good. That's, they're that's, fun. That's my answer. There's my answer. There you go. All right. Cannibal Corpse. That's that's fine. Uh, if you could be a, any superhero for 24 hours, who would you be? And what would you do with your day of power? My day of power? Oh, man. I'd probably... I would. My favorite superhero is probably Batman, but he's not really very super. He's just rich. Uh, but maybe just Spider-Man, and I would probably just swing from building to building just all day until I threw up because... <laughs> <laughs> like ever since I was little, I think that was like I just I was like I want to swing from building to building. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> just maybe like maybe naked because I think that would also be funny for everyone else. <laughs> That's not a web slinger, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. It's a purple-headed yogurt slinger. Yes. <laughs> okay. Satan shows up at your house for a midnight snack. What do you cook for him? What does Satan want for a midnight snack? Oh man. Yeah. He's probably getting cookies. I'm just gonna make Satan <laughs> some cookies. Cookies and nice. milk. Okay. I was gonna would you pair a nice tea with that? With that with those cookies? I guess yeah, if it's at nighttime, maybe maybe a nice chamomile. Maybe a just Satan slumber tea also how he'll have some cookies and Satan slumber. Nice. Excellent, excellent. Okay. I, I'm I, I don't, I'm not going to assume or presume, but I'm just guessing this is a yes, but are you, uh, I mean, we are heavy metal horror. So are you a horror fan? I am a horror fan. Um, there's like a lot of movies. I wasn't like super intense into like seeing tons of movies, but I've been dating this girl for like almost a year now. And she's like obsessed, obsessed with horror movies. So, like in the past year, I've seen more horror movies than I've seen in my entire life. I would say, um, so yeah, I like I just didn't realize how much I was missing from the genre, um, and how much I didn't know about horror movies, um, like other than like some of like the bigger names that everyone I guess sees usually. Um, yeah, I I love horror movies. And I'm definitely a big <laughs> into horror movies right now. Nice. So, what are some of your favorite uh, horror movies that you've seen? Um, recently, like one I just watched. We just watched one last night called Into the Deep House. That was like kind of an interesting oh, one. Yeah. Uh, a lot of jump scares in that one. Um, I just watched this movie, Hush. I'm not sure if you've seen oh, Hush. Yeah. Um, it's about like a, a deaf woman who has like, uh, is in this house and there's like a person trying to break into her house. Um, yep. And it's kind of like a different uh, perspective. Uh, just different, because uh, there's no. On the, different perspective on the home invasion thing. Uh, no, yeah, totally. It was, it was Someone crush. being deaf. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so Hush really stands out. Um, you watch this, yeah, this one Japanese um, horror movie. It was like from the 80s. I can't remember the name, but that was like very interesting. Um, and then, yeah, some like the recent, more recent ones like Midsummer and um, Hereditary were like uh, probably some of my, I really liked Hereditary, like especially. Yeah, yeah, I found that, uh, you know, Chop and I go way back in our horror, back to like the days of the old Hammer films and Universal stuff. Growing up with watching these movies, but I find there's so much more excitement in watching foreign horror, and now it's much easier to get foreign horror films than it was even a decade ago. Yeah. Um, you know, when a few J horror was trickling in, like Ringu and things like that. But now you could just you could find horror movies from every country on the planet, and um, well, the Korean the Korean horror is Korean famous. horror. Yeah, there's a lot of great Korean horror. Um, yeah, there's a lot of great, great stuff out there. Um, okay, so when you were growing up, what was your favorite Halloween costume? 
uh, <laughs> I actually was not allowed to grow Halloween. Oh, I was okay. not allowed to go trick or treating because of um, God. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. Like, I I'm not sure that I ever did actually go trick or treating. Um, but if I did, I would, yeah, I would definitely want to dress up as like probably Batman or some shit like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, would be like my, probably cause I was obsessed with Batman, but yeah, there was absolutely no trick or treating allowed in our family growing up. I understand, man. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I went to a church <laughs> as a teenager where they had, um, an alternate to trick or treating, but at the church, you know, they would have, oh, um, yeah. you know, the people would come out and they have like, they had a big parking lot and kids would come and, but they were allowed to bring their costumes and stuff, but it was like a safe trick or treating, you know, which was cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah, letting, yeah. letting the kids dress up a little bit, but yeah, no, I, I get it. I get it. Um, okay. We're, these are, these are some, uh, just one-offs. These could be about anything. So yeah. Uh, can you remember the very first album you bought? Oh yeah, the very first album I bought was um, whatever the Creed album is that has with arms wide open. Okay. Or Nickelback, Silver Side Up. It would have been one of those two. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, and who are some of your favorite writers uh, and favorite books? Oh man, I'm trying to think of the books I've read recently. Like looking at my book pile over there. Um, I was into like. I'm not so much into it now, but I was really into like Bukowski um, and like his poetry, I think, um, growing up. Um, even like someone like J.P. Anuim, who wrote the, this is like, it's like a metal comic book um, called Belzebubs. Um, I think that's like, it's like a Calvin and Hobbes. That's oh, kind of nice. like, um, um, yeah. I'm trying to think of whom. You know, my books. Uh, yeah, I guess like H.P. Lovecraft, like looking at the Necronomicon, mm -hmm. um, just like some of his stories and stuff. They're probably like some of the main ones. And it's all, it's all like pretty random. Like um, I was really into, I love Lord of the Rings. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Those are probably Tolkien. Mm -hmm. Nice. And the rest, the rest of it, yeah, the rest of it's like, yeah, pretty random. <laughs> One okay. Off. No, that's cool. That's good. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to make a recommendation. I don't know if you've ever read uh, Richard Matheson's I am legend. No. Um, yeah. Don't see the movie. Or the one with Mill Smith. If your girlfriend wants to watch oh, it, yeah. just, just shy her away. No, from I've, def that. I've definitely, I've definitely seen the movie. Okay. Yeah. We'll forget everything. Time ago, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unlearned everything you have learned as yeah. Yoda would say. Yeah. Just, it's a novella. Uh, yeah. It's so much, so much better. It's, I'm actually teaching it to my, uh, one of my English classes this semester. So um, they're going to be in for a surprise. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Well, another one would be the legend of hell house too. That's a great novel by him as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Matheson's yeah. a great, very prolific, prolific writer. Yeah. Um, okay. Who's your favorite cartoon character? Ooh, that's a good, that's a, that's a fantastic question. Um, yeah, I feel like I, I'm not like a favorites guy. Like I just love so much of so many things. I'm just like, I, I never like really pick one. Um, growing Probably up. Tasmanian devil. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's actually like, I, I had multiple Tasmanian <laughs> devil. <laughs> plushy toys growing up. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, that, that probably would be one. That's probably one that's up there. Uh, Can't go wrong with Bug Bunny, you know. I mean, those the Warner Brothers, those oh, Warner, Looney Tunes so, were fantastic. Yeah, I did love the Looney Tunes. Yeah, damn. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I could pick this one. But yeah, Looney Tunes are great. Uh, what was it the Animaniacs? Mm -hmm. Really upset. Yeah. <laughs> those were fun, man. That was a good cartoon. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, that's cool. Okay, what one song do you wish you'd written and recorded instead of the group who did? Um, I Come Blood by Cannibal Corpse. <laughs> yeah. Genius. Yeah, yeah. I was I hoping was... you were going to say, Cut it in <laughs> yeah i was uh I, chop and i had a band for a while oh. band project that never really took off uh yeah. wizards of gore based on That's the uh sick. yeah based on the you know the, the uh herschel gordon lewis uh inspired by that that's, that's the name but i wrote a song for that album called gorgasm and it was about a guy uh you know getting off killing himself you know starts, <laughs> just like the movie uh what was it uh oh fuck um the the night of the loving dead the, the necromantic 
you know. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, I just imagine he just starts like stabbing himself in the stomach and then like just ejaculating blood. I'm like, oh that's <laughs> that's just fucking amazing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Which which non music celebrity would you most like to have a drink with? Non music celebrity. Hmm. Um, uh, I think yeah, he probably is does Tolkien count as a celebrity? Um, I think that would be interesting just to talk sure. to him about and stuff. He, even like he, he's non-music, but he's like influenced like so much black metal and <laughs> lyrical content. I think it would right. just be like, um, especially with like the new Lord of the Rings stuff happening now. Like, what are your thoughts on all this shit? <laughs> I'm curious. <laughs> I'd be like, man, I wish I had some of this dough rolling in. You know? <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, okay. This 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 is one of the games we're going to play. Uh, this is called Blast Beats. And I'm going to ask you a quick uh, question, and you just answer what first thing that comes in your mind. All right. Uh, it's usually most of them are simple choice questions. So. Okay. Okay. Hot dog or hamburger? Hamburger. Favorite pizza topping? Pepperoni. Paperback or Kindle? Paperback. PC or Apple? Apple. Favorite streaming service? Spotify. Favorite ice cream flavor? Ooh chocolate dog or cat uh cat avengers or justice league oh god uh justice league star trek or star wars oh star wars bigfoot or loch ness monster loch ness monster dracula or frankenstein dracula how do you like your steak cooked uh medium rare on the rarer side favorite sport uh, skateboarding <laughs> <laughs> blood sport um <laughs> favorite movie snack uh french fries favorite subject in school uh social studies your least favorite subject in school math favorite board game uh board game uh Monopoly. <laughs> favorite Christmas gift. Favorite Christmas. My favorite Christmas gift. I got a bass guitar, and that's kind of set off my band. Starting, that was yeah, bass guitar. Nice. Uh, your celebrity crush. Celebrity crush. Damn. Um, what's the chick from Resident Evil? What, her. Oh. Man. <laughs> oh, Mila Jovovich. Oh no. The movies yeah, or the, Mila, Mila, is it Mila Jovovich? Yeah, Mila. Okay. The movies, not the TV show. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, the best concert you've ever attended? Um, Job for Cowboy, Animosity, Cattle Decapitation, and Misery Index. Nice. Cattle Decapitation. Those guys are great, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's just so fucking brutal. Uh, okay. Last one. Favorite line from This Is Spinal Tap. Oh my God! Uh, none come to mind, but there's, there's oh, one. Okay. I'm or you can do a favorite scene as well. That sometimes that's a little easier to instead of a line necessarily. I don't know. That's okay. Can't, cool. Yeah, I can't think of something. no problem. It's all right. Um, this next game is called the hot seat. And we say okay. it's the hot seat because sometimes it makes our guests a little uncomfortable because I'm going to be asking you, the, uh, I'm going to mention the name of a band and I want you to tell me your favorite album from that band. And sometimes guests like, like, like oh, oh, what the fuck is that band? Or they don't like the band or whatever. So that's why we just call it the hot seat. Okay. All right. So we're going to start with a Black Sabbath. Uh, what's this? Is the self titled of the first yeah. album? Yeah. Yeah. Judas Priest. Ooh, uh, break the law. No, great yeah. British deal. Yeah, yeah. British, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> British deal. Yeah, um, iced earth. I never listened to a lot of iced earth, so I couldn't answer that one. Okay, uh, motorhead. Sure. Ooh, uh, ace of spades or what? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. Um, carcass. Carcass. Oh, that's uh. That's a hard one. Surgical Steel, I guess. Yeah, that's a great album. Yeah, that and Heart Work, man. So so many good albums. Um, Dio. Dio, oh, uh, 
It's the first one. It's got to be the first Holy one. Diver. Uh, Holy Diver. Yeah, yeah. Holy Diver. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Metal Church. I never listened to Metal Church, so I can't answer. Okay. How about Halloween? Halloween. Oh. Um, I can't. Yeah, I don't know the albums. I, I could have named. I could have named the album. That's fine. Uh, Rush. Figured you're a Canadian. You gotta be obligatory to listen to at least one Rush song. No. Yeah. No. Fuck. <laughs> I can't remember the names. I'm not good. I know if you can name a song, we can we can tell you the album. It's like the, the one they sing on that. What's that fucking movie now where he's like a fake best friend? Uh, I can't. I got skip. I got skip. Okay, no I'm problem. A bad, I'm a bad yeah. Canadian. <laughs> That's okay. Um, okay. Do you know? Do you? How about Opeth? Are you familiar with Opeth? I am. From, yeah, I'm not. I don't really listen to a lot of Opeth. No. Okay, this next one will be easier. King Diamond. Okay. <laughs> Halloween. No, that's not that's that's Merciful that's... Fate. Um, Abigail. Abigail. Okay. Um, Iron Maiden. Um, I don't know. I didn't really listen to a lot of Iron Maiden. Yeah, when you're taught, you can't listen to that music. It's hard. I get it. Yeah. yeah. We'll send you some. We're going to send you a care package with some music. Okay. Okay, and it'll help you right along. So. <laughs> okay, this one should be easy for you. Deicide. Deicide. Uh, uh, that's that's hard. I love Deicide. Um, the last album was so good, but Scars of the Crucifix or, or Legion. Okay, I admire the the dedication. You know of 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 burning a, an inverted crucifix into your head. That's that's dedication. <laughs> you know, like okay, I want to talk with him. Hilarious. It's like yeah. yeah, we got some issues, but we got something in common. We we gotta talk. Yeah. Um, okay, Slayer. Uh, Slayer. Uh, does it Hell awaits or uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. And then last one, Kiss. Kiss. I never listened to a lot of Kiss, but yeah, like I guess uh, Love Gun. That's like what's that song? Uh, yeah. What's that album? Love Gun. That's the, that's <laughs> oh. the name of the album too. Oh yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's classic old school Kiss. All right, and our, our our last game that that we want to uh, bring up is called Name That Festival. And so Satanic Tico is playing a festival with two other artists. I'm going to spin the Wheel of Mystery to find these two other bands Then I'd like you to name the festival that you're all playing at. So okay. I'm going to share my screen here. Here we go. Spin that wheel. There we go. All right. Okay, can you see the Wheel of Mystery? I see it. All right, well, I'm going to spin the first one. So Satanic Tico is playing and with... Oh, 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 you just missed Cannibal Corpse. Oh, oh it's Motorhead. Nice. Oh. <laughs> okay, Motorhead. Nice. That's good. I thought we were going to hit Shakira there. Yeah, that was I'd have been exciting. I'd like to uh, play with Shakira as well. Um, and it looks like, oh, oh, it could be the Jonas Brothers. Nice. <laughs> so, there we go. Kiko, Motorhead, and the Jonas Brothers. And the Jonas We're, Brothers, right? What a <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a great festival. Uh, yeah, we're playing uh, Maryland Death Fest. <laughs> oh, nice. There we go. <laughs> and our final act is killing the Jonas Brothers on stage. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> nice. nice. Um, okay, you know, this is about fandom. We're all fans of other artists. Uh, so what is your favorite piece of memorabilia? My favorite piece of memorabilia? That's um, I guess like I don't know like uh I I I doesn't I guess like I have some t-shirts I guess that I've also like lost <laughs> some t-shirts. Um, I love records. Um, and just like with doing the tea company, like um, being able to create pieces of memorabilia for some of these artists that have uh satanic pico attached to them. Like I would probably just say like some of the teas that we've made, like, especially like the Cradle of Filth um, and Bloodbath ones and Cryptopsy are like, um, mean like a lot. I have them in like a case and everything. Like, um, so I would say, yeah, like the Satanic Tico 
collabs with Cradle of Filth, Bloodbath, and Cryptopsy are probably like my favorite. Um, selfishly <laughs> and like maybe like narciss- narcissistically <laughs> it's like my favorite uh, piece of memory but it's being able to like be a part of that like legacy or history um this like yeah it really means a lot to me but other than that i would say like yeah maybe um probably t-shirts are probably like my favorite piece of memorability memory of memory uh bill bill yeah my brain it's okay it's all good <laughs> yeah you need to smoke some more that's all right man it's all good yeah. yeah so um all right so what are your plans for the rest of 2022 going into 2023 like you know you mentioned the band so i don't know a whole lot about the band side other than like the one video which i think is brilliant um because i was looking uh, was trying to scour social media for it so do you have an album coming out do you, have, you plan on touring can you can you give us any updates on like what's happening with the the band side of things totally yeah we have a new single coming out um in a couple weeks called human tea um it features uh the singer from cryptopsy on that song um it's like definitely like more old school death metal than the first track is um we have a full ep written and recorded that will be released um next year early next year They'll have like more um, horror themed music videos to go with the songs. Um, because the band is just me and um, the producer right now, like we're just like nailing down live performing artists. And then hopefully by early next year, after the EP comes out, we'll be starting to play uh, live shows as well. Oh, that'd be awesome. Um, and then hopefully, you know, hit some touring circuits and things like that. No, totally. Uh, just as long as we can get the. Just trying to, yeah, just like focusing on getting the EP just wrapped up. Um, and then, yeah, just like practicing. Hopefully we'll start practicing in person at the end of this year. Um, once we just nail down the members, we're just like still shuffling through a couple people. Um, yeah, and then just like trying to figure out what the live performance will look like because it's like so, we're so like theatrical kind of like just via on social media, which is like the main source people so yes, I guess, like just trying to translate that in a way that's not like overly cheesy, but like also like possible to like replicate that every single day. Um, yeah, that's if hard. If we were to go on tour. Yeah, yeah. When Chop and I were doing Wizards of Gore, we were looking at like just the the, the realities of having gore on stage and blood and like trying to recycle that blood and reuse it. And like, how, you know, it just, it, it's, it's like the, there's just a mess well, you know you the can't best yeah. part of it was we had a we had a, this we we're gonna have this giant ass prop of shot chocolate pudding at the crowd <laughs> yeah, that's right <laughs> fucking look like three four children okay <laughs> lofty goals we had there right? <laughs> that's right yeah you know right yeah it was just, we you want that imagery you want that like shock value because that's like part of the fun you know and writing yeah. songs like feed us feed us you know about eating babies <laughs> and like you know but we thought oh uh, we're going to get to the point where people are going to think we're real. Like we're really talking about like eating a rubbery fetus. Like, no, no, man, it's just a fucking joke. Don't you get it? Yeah, um, yeah. But that's the thing. Like you run in circles where people just don't get the fucking joke. They just, they just don't see it. Um, they can never grasp why, you know, you have a piece of spam on stage. It's carved into like a little fetus shape and it's got <laughs> cherry glaze on it. You're like, ah, take a bite. And that's, you know, that's, that's funny for the people who get it. Um, yeah, but the ones who don't like, yeah, they mess no, up. Yeah people, <laughs> yeah, people really like. I don't know. There's like a lot of the same. I think same thing. Like especially right now, just like five dudes in shirts, long hair. They're playing like very similar music, and that's like awesome. Like I love that, <laughs> and I love like I love classic death metal, especially like this resurgence of um, a lot of awesome, awesome bands um, that are like really making it right now um but yeah for satanic pico i think it just has to be it's like everything else is just kind of outrageous already so like why would i wouldn't why would i take the makeup off <laughs> and then mm-hmm. play it just plain clothes with nothing else to offer other than just jamming out um i think it just has to be different and um yeah just figuring out like the logistics for that because like the more stuff you add like it gets very expensive really quick <laughs> especially right. if you're re- doing it every single day on a tour um type situation so yeah we're still figuring it all out but yeah it's definitely in the plans and we are like it's something we're working on um to get going for next year as soon as we can release the ep and like have 
a, a actual block of music for people to listen to. But for now, we have like another song coming out in a couple of weeks. And then if we're lucky, maybe one more single by the end of the year. But if not, the rest of the EP will be out early next year. Okay, cool. Yeah, I just had a great you know idea. Like, uh, Chop Top, maybe you and I could do, I mean, I'd love to see like a black metal, blue, you know, bluegrass band. Yeah, you know, you're all wearing the the overalls and the flannel shirts, and you're playing banjos and shit. But you then you the have the black paint. metal paint, yeah. that death corpse paint. That would be awesome. That would, yeah, Cause, yeah. Because I like blue. <laughs> I like bluegrass. I mean, there's some great musicians in bluegrass, but they have a bluegrass death metal band. I don't think I've ever seen that combination. That might yeah. Be. Yeah. take bluegrass <laughs> instrumentation through yeah. amplifiers, yeah. and like that might be kind of awesome. Yeah, I think it would be. <laughs> or even like uh, Zeal and Ardor is kind of adding some like. He has like some bluegrass aspects to his like own brand of black metal, which is kind of cool. Oh, yeah. nice! Yeah, I'll I'll check into that. Yeah, because there's some amazing musicians uh, out there. You know, that'd be uh, that'd be cool. So, um, you know, Crucifix, I want to thank you for spending this uh, hour with us. Um, I really appreciate your time, and we've had a great time getting to know you. Um, I just want to thank you for 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 being on the show, man. Oh yeah, thank you so much. Like I. Uh, Super stoked to be here. I really appreciate y'all for having me on, um, asking me some good questions, even though my <laughs> did didn't have the best answers for all of them. But yeah, I really appreciate it. No, it's good. To, uh, on here. Yeah, thank you. Wow, well, we appreciate it uh, very much. So, um, if there's one thing we could ask, uh, would you mind doing a bumper for us? Like this is Crucifix of Satanic Tico, and you're watching and listening to heavy metal horror. W would you mind doing something like that for us? Yeah, like right now. Yeah, would that be cool? Would it be all right to do yeah. that? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is it is is it too much to ask when you say heavy metal horror? Could you do it like in the death metal growl? Would that be possible? Was that going to hurt you? I don't want to. I don't want to cause stress on your throat. No, it's like I was sick last week, but I'll try. I haven't sang in a bit, but I'll try. <laughs> okay, so this cool. Is Crucifix from Titanic Tico, and you're listening to heavy metal horror, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. This is Crucifix from Titanic Tico, and you're listening to heavy metal horror. Fantastic. That okay. <laughs> no, that's great man that's great that's great oh, uh, right. no this is oh, this is right. wonderful yeah uh Ooh, thank you fun. very much yeah. uh we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do our um commercial we're gonna get out of here um and if it's cool with you i'd like to uh, hang out for like another five minutes i just want to talk to you about some other things if that's cool you got time yeah yeah i got time Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Hey, you can find Heavy Metal Horror on UnsaneRadio.com. Listen to full episodes or download to your device. You can find us on Facebook, Heavy Metal Horror Podcast. On Instagram, look for Montag Lewis, one word. Our YouTube page, Heavy Metal Horror Podcast. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. And uh, now we're on Roku, Hotel Metal Jam. If you know someone who'd like our show, tell them about us. This has been Montag, Master of Illusion. Chop top. And you've been watching and listening to all right, Crucifix, bring up the horns. Heavy metal horror. This is Doug Helbring, and you have been listening to Heavy Metal Horror, the best podcast that you've never heard before. <laughs>